Hi, I'm Andy, and welcome to Litho Lessons, a video series where we'll teach you about the internals of Litho and how to use it. This video covers the very fundamentals of the framework, how a component goes from code to appearing on the screen. There are three major steps. First, creating the internal node tree. Second, creating the layout state. And third, mounting that layout state. Let's start with the internal node tree. The internal node tree is our first representation of the UI. It's created by calling the onCreateLayout function of your component specs. Each internal node in this tree corresponds to a yoga node, which holds layout properties that will be used to configure elements on the screen. Let's take a look at an example. Say we want to display this example item component by setting it as the root of our component tree. First, since the root is an example item component, we will start at example item component spec. Within Litho, we'll create the root of the internal node tree and associate it with example item component. Next, we want to resolve this component by calling onCreateLayout. In general, there are three types of components that can be returned from onCreateLayout. Primitives like text, image, and other mount specs, containers like row and column, and other higher level components. Our goal in this process is to resolve components down to a tree of primitives and container types. In this instance, our onCreateLayout function returns another higher level component. We'll associate it with the same internal node and then try to recursively resolve it by looking at its spec and calling onCreateLayout. In this case, onCreateLayout returns a row, which is one of the container types. This row has two children, an image and a title subtitle component, which we'll create internal nodes for. Since image is a mount spec primitive, we don't need to resolve it anymore. But title subtitle component is a higher level component, so we will repeat this process, going to its spec and calling onCreateLayout. We get a column, which is another container type, and we associate it with the same internal node. We then add the two texts as children. Since they're primitives, they also don't need to be resolved any further. We've now created our internal node tree. We've resolved our root component into a tree where the inner nodes are containers and the leaves are mount spec primitives. Our second step is to use this tree to create a layout state. A layout state is a flattened description of what should appear on the screen. It contains a list of everything that needs to be drawn in their absolute x, y widths and heights. We'll take this layout state and mount it into a litho view in our third step. To create a layout state, we'll first measure and layout our internal node tree using the Yoga Layout Library. This will take our tree of internal nodes with layout properties like margin and padding and turn it into a tree where each node has an absolute x, y width and height. Next, we'll walk this tree and collect layout outputs from it, where each layout output corresponds to something that needs to appear on screen. We always have a root layout output which corresponds to the litho view itself. The first node we come to is a row, which was only used for layout and does not need to appear on the screen, so we can skip it. We'll then add a layout output for the image, recording its calculated absolute positioning. We can also skip columns since it was also only used to position its children, and then we'll add layout outputs for the two texts. At the end of this process, we have our layout state object with a list of what needs to be drawn on the screen. Our final step is mount. Mount happens only on the UI thread and renders a layout state into actual Android primitives like view and drawable within a litho view. Each layout output in the layout state corresponds to a mountable item. This mounting is done as lazily as possible using a process called incremental mount. Let's see how this looks for our example. When we go to mount our layout state, we'll walk the layout outputs and create or reuse the mount content of the appropriate type and add it to the litho view with its bounds we got from yoga. Note that since the image and text don't have any special properties that necessitate them being views, the litho framework will automatically mount them as image and text drawables resulting in a flatter hierarchy. Mounting in Litho is done incrementally. In standard Android, as soon as the first pixel of a row is going to appear on screen, the entire row needs to be created. In Litho, we have the bounds of everything in the Litho view, so we can intersect them with the visible bounds. This means we can determine exactly what needs to be mounted for any given frame. We mount items only when necessary and start recycling them sooner when they go off screen. Finally, let's talk about profiling. When you use SysTrace to measure your app's performance, we provide some litho-specific blocks around this process. LayoutState.calculate corresponds to the first two steps I covered, the creation of the internal node tree and the creation of the layout state. CreateLayout blocks correspond to calling onCreateLayout, 
and the measure tree and collect results blocks correspond to creating the layout state from the internal node tree. On the UI thread, you'll also see specific calls to incremental mount. Incremental mount is called on each frame the visible bounds change to update the items that need to be mounted. So as a recap, when you set a component on a component tree or litho view, we'll first create an internal node tree by calling onCreateLayout. We'll then measure, layout, and flatten that internal node tree to create a layout state. Finally, that layout state will be mounted into a litho view on the main thread, creating actual views and drawables, and your component will be drawn on the screen. Thank you for watching, and happy lithoing.